Hi, Claire. We are about to go Facebook Live, so just one second. And We are live. Okay. Or soon to be. Okay, we're live. So hello, everybody. Um, I am Blake Cabot. I am the owner of facepaint.com. And I am here with uh, Chris Alex. And Chris is a special FX artist in uh, Los Angeles. And she um, had the uh, one that's amazing, did this amazing decide. Hi, Belinda. And uh, she did this amazing design for us, which I'll give you a link to because it, it sort of, it's, uh, it was, it's 3D effects, but it's just amazing. So needless to say, she won the contest. And uh, hello, Gilbert. Yeah, I'm excited about this one too. Um, so, and uh, hi, Perla. Um, and this was the, let's see, contests. It was in contests, Instagram contests. Just getting the link for you guys. And it's this one. This is it. So this was the contest that we ran. And uh, Chris won the first one. North Carolina. We got North Carolina. We got Juarez, Mexico. Oh. And we've got uh, Gilbert from Texas. <laughs> That's awesome. Jana says hi. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, take it away, Chris. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start out with the muscle for, because the bones in the image are, a tr it's a translucent UV. So I have to, basically, I did everything in different face paints and products before going on to that step, because once you paint over the UV, you're not gonna see it. So I'm gonna start with the pink craze. Hi from Australia. Hello. So I'm just going to do a quick base. Wow. You are really fast at this. <laughs> what, what brush are you using? People are going to ask, so I might as well get ahead uh, of myself. This is this kind of a rounded, actually it's a kind of a foundation brush. Uh huh. And I just, I mean, I use sponges too, but sometimes it's just easier because the brushes are right there. <laughs> so I just kind of go for the brushes. And plus two, I'm not too worried about and like the textures and stuff because right. I'm gonna paint over with the muscle but I do like to kind of put a base so that I'm not left with like these open skin areas and having to worry about that later. Hi Ireland, hi Arkansas, hi Texas, hi Chana, Ashley and Eileen. Hi. Glad you can come join us. 
So if you guys have questions and stuff, which you've got to have questions with this, this, because this is really pretty advanced stuff that you're going to be seeing. So uh, please feel free to ask, and I will ask Chris. Yes, definitely ask questions. Because uh, that this that design that I put the link for, that was all done with UV. Um, uh, so uh, I yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm just taking a brush with a dryer mixture and just kind of mapping out the uh, the muscles. And I do have a reference because I can't remember <laughs> all the different muscles yeah. and overlapping and everything. So I do kind of refer to that, though. I'm not like too concerned if it's a little off because it's still going to look cool in the end. If you kind of make up some muscle. Can group. you move your arm a little bit over? Because uh, not that direction, that direction. Perfect. Yeah, Good. there you go. Yeah. Um, you're right, Gilbert. The motor brush would do, it was kind of the same thing. I've seen brushes like that from Royal Langnickel that do some similar things that you've used. Okay, so you're outlining the muscle or the bone at this point? Uh, this is all the muscle. So I'm just kind of figuring out like what muscles overlap and doing kind of the striations to mm -hmm. keep with that muscle texture. Okay. And then, cause right now it doesn't really look like much, but it, the guide kind of helps me keep with that texture and keeping track of what goes on top of what. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I'm also gonna come in with a couple different colors to kind of really flesh it out and give it more dimension. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take some of the red just a little bit of the black because I just want it a little, a little deeper. And then still just kind of, it's really just a lot of building up the textures. It's kind of the whole trust the process kind of thing with it because it kind of mm -hmm. looks like a mess at first, but once you really- You know where you're going. Yeah. Just gonna trust in it and just keep going. It will look like something in the end. And so stuff like this, like this muscle here overlaps this little guy. So just kind of use that darker red as a shadow, but then still kind of creating some of that muscle mm -hmm. fiber texture. And then certain areas where it might be darker will come in with a darker color and build that up. That's another reason why I kind of did the pink thinly first so that I don't have to worry as much about exposed skin while I just build this up. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, Zuri, you're here. Thank God. I love Zuri. And I'm taking my little red and black mixture a little bit, but adding a little more black this time. Uh-huh. I'm just kind of worrying about those edges a little bit for the muscles. Hey, Zuri. Great. them. And then dragging some into the texture. And so that, that design that you did, how many hours did that take? Uh, that took about seven hours. Okay. Uh, I did shoot the, the muscle once that was done in case it went belly up before I did the the bone area. So that probably took a little bit of time too, getting the footage for that. Mm -hmm. But it, it took a while with a couple breaks too, because uh, 
it's a long time to kind of sit. Gilbert thinks that looks great already. Oh, thank you. So Chris was Chris went to uh, train as a special FX artist. So she is um, she's done a little professional face painting. She does body painting and things like that. But she doesn't. She really comes at it much more from the special FX point of view, which is so it's a very different point of view than uh, tr traditional face painting. Right, because I know uh, there's a lot less like overlapping. I tend to just keep layering and layering, just because that is kind of how with painting prosthetics, the more you layer, the more realistic it's gonna look and the more dimension. But I know with certain face painting, you don't wanna be like messing with the white <laughs> and like, right. the black and kind of keeping them separate and make sure they don't get muddy. But I kinda, I, yeah, I do kind of approach it a little differently than traditional. Okay, then. So for some of like the tendon area where basically the muscle is going to be attached to the bone, I'm just going to take some white and yellow and kind of make a little mixture. But I do kind of, I have a little palette on off camera that I'm mixing this on. Sure. Uh, can you move your arm just a tad over? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. So this is basically just the tendon tissue that's holding that muscle onto the bone, onto your elbow. There's actually a little tendon stuff in here holding on the other muscles that I'm not actually painting right now, but I'm going to fill that space in. Get some of that tendon. I also kind of bring some of this a little bit lightly just for some highlights, but I'm going to go in with some. Uh, Belinda asks, what size brush are you using? Uh, I think, because this doesn't have a number on it, but I think it's about a six, I want to say. Okay. Uh, this is actually more of an oval shape. So it's, a, it's a filbert? Uh, yes. Okay. But it is oval versus round, so it does kind of, it's right. uh, nice because you kind of get the nice thin lines and then you can also get some nice thick coverage. This is actually the same brush I used for the entire uh, makeup to get all the, because I tend not to switch out brushes too much because I kind of just get in the groove and just kind of keep with it. Huh. How do you clean them and stuff like that? Switch colors? Uh, I just, I have a little- uh, Water thing? Water. Yeah, I got a little water jar and then just kind of do that. And then I also, because sometimes I work with alcohol colors, so then I have a separate little cup that has alcohol and I just kind of go, back and forth and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a little more what I'm used to. Of course, it's not really something I can do so much if I, like when I did do my face painting gig, I definitely was using new brushes constantly and stuff or right because it's on people. But if I'm just on one person, you're not, you don't have to worry about the sanitation as much going in and out with it because you're working on the same person. Just make sure you're using clean brushes to begin with and clean them after kind of thing. Gilbert thinks this is cool. He's right. <laughs> so who is, the, who is the model for uh, your, uh, your other design, the design you won with? Uh, the model is my husband because I know where he lives and I can make sure he sits for me. <laughs> 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 He's watching this, by the way. So if you have anything uh, nice to say about him, this, now's the time, people. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's so good to me to be to sit patiently like that because I don't think I could do that. <laughs> Hi, Marina. Um, yeah, yeah, that takes a lot. How many of you, uh, the face painters out there, have uh, painted your spouse more than five times? <laughs> <laughs> will they? Will are they willing to do it?
Okay, so a lot of times too, uh, because especially with like the water-based, of course, you know, you reactivate it and stuff, which is another reason why I know face paint techniques are a little different. So you don't have to worry about that. So I do spray once in a while with the sealer. Uh -huh. So uh, this, there we go. So I'm using, uh, it's a skin illustrator. It's a, it's just a very light, thin coat sealer. Uh -huh. And that way it just won't keep reactivating since I do like to layer and layer. Uh huh. And that That's way it protects it a little underneath stuff. So if I find like it's getting a little muddy, I'm not really getting the color payoff I want because it's reactivating. Then I'll just do that. I see. Sometimes I'll incorporate alcohol based and I'll use that as kind of a bottom layer. So like say the pink, maybe do the alcohol base. So that way when you use the water base over top, it won't reactivate it at all. Huh. So you have a lot of skin illustrator for your alcohol based paints? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, that's, okay. Do. That's kind of going back to the, with the special effects, kind of what I'm used to. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Use them a lot. Belinda says that would look great with a Terminator cyborg design. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Well, uh, Chana's, yeah, her husband won't let her do it. And Zuri, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Zuri, Zuri's done it any number of times, it seems. She just got recently engaged. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to find people that are willing to sit for, especially because, I mean, I think the longest makeup we did, it was a 10-hour one that he sat for. Oof. Uh, he's got the patience. I don't. <laughs> wow. I don't really have the patience to actually paint that long, much less sit in one space. I almost want to see what your husband looks like in real life because my image of him at this point is pretty <laughs> scary. <laughs> he, he looks a little, little, little demonic in that picture. <laughs> yeah, he definitely looks more approachable. <laughs> in, in real life than that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the paint and kind of just flesh out some of these striations a little bit. <laughs> Zuri paints her fiance while, while he's playing his PS4. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Exactly. Any port in the storm, Zuri. Belinda's painted her husband has grinched twice before, but he would never sit for hours. <laughs> I can understand that though. It's it's hard. I can't sit still that long. <laughs> yeah, that is hard. Okay, I'm just gonna bring the pink into the tendons a little bit to kind of break that up so it doesn't just look like a solid. So for those who are joining recently, so what we're showing, Chris is showing some, so basically this amazing designs that she's done, uh, showing quite realistic muscle skeleton and doing 3D effects. And so this is, uh, I don't know, it, she's doing this all with face paint and a little sealer. Now we're going to go in and flesh some of the shadows out a little bit more with the black. And sometimes for shading and stuff, I do use like star blend or kind of a powder, which mm -hmm. I like to use a lot. But I found with doing the muscle, just going straight in with this uh, black face paint worked great because I can still kind of do those striations and get that depth in the muscle tissue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
just a couple kind of later in the tendons. Don't want them to pop too much. Hi, Jeff. I'm going to bring a few of these striations kind of in the middle of the muscle just so it kind of gives it a little more interest. Uh -huh. so it's not all just on one side and the other. I'm using pretty thin consistency for this too, so I don't accidentally just kind of commit to too dark. I'd rather uh -huh. just kind of keep going back in with some uh, the black than kind of get an oops. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm still kind of creating those overlapping areas and kind of pushing the muscles that are underneath, pushing down a little bit more with the black. So how did you get his eye to disappear? Or you just closed his eye and you made it a black thing? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, his eyes were closed. Yeah. I know some people tend to, like, they'll put something over or whatever to kind of get an effect. But I kind of, if I can, I prefer to just kind of have them close their eye because then he's not blinded for <laughs> a long time having something covering it. Right. Plus, I kind of wanted it to be a two in one so that uh, when he's got the, the muscle portion, he's got his mm -hmm. eyes, and then he just closes his eyes for the full skeleton look. And he sat there for hours. Yeah, he's just <laughs> a lot of patience. It was um, are you using an angle brush with the black? Uh, no, this is still just that oval one. The fill uh, brush? Yeah, and it's just, I've found that it worked really well for me to do this because uh, you can kind of get that, the fatter end, but then you can get that nice thin line. And I like that it does kind of flatten a little bit more than like a round brush would which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. so I can kind of get those striations. I actually don't use angle brushes that often. Marina um, thinks this is awesome to watch. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> hoping it was going to be interesting for people to see, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> Actually, could you show the other palette? Instead? I mean, unless, unless you're using the craze one. Uh, yeah, because I've been... You're doing both? Uh, uh, I, we need your arm more than we need the other palette. Yeah, but yeah, it's just the full one. Okay, stuff, that's fine. But, uh, that's the one I'm using. Okay. Since I can just kind of mix the colors and get different variations, it's kind of perfect. Sure. For anything. Once it gets too dark, just kind of tap it out. <laughs> right. But I'm going to come in with some of the Probably the red again. Just 
just to get some more separation and depth mm -hmm. to it. So just a little bit of the red and black out of that palette. Just like creating kind of just a little more interest. Oh, that's Jeff. So I sorry I, I didn't. I Jeff, I didn't recognize that was that was your husband. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, so Jeff's been commenting. She wanted to give up on it. She she wanted to give up on that design. Uh, well, during the mus the bone part, because like the muscle, I felt pretty good at the bone. I was very hesitant because it was the first time that I kind of was using it. Right. And because uh, the problem is you can't take it away once it's down because mm -hmm. you have a makeup underneath. So you're kind of committed to whatever you paint. And I was getting really worried because it wasn't what I really wanted. And I kept kind of goofing up lines and everything. And I couldn't fix it because of the nature of the product. But uh, once I started airbrushing, I definitely felt a little more, a little better about the dimension and stuff that I was getting. Right. Well, that's interesting. Your husband says when these makeups go so long, sometimes Chris can get to a point where she needs reassurance that the makeup is going to be done successfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gets scary because you're so many hours in and then you're wondering like, oh, did I just, just go to work at all? Right. So I'm going to do a soft highlight using the pink and a little bit of the white. Because mm -hmm. I want to save the pure white for like the last little bright highlights. Jeff, you're a saint. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, eight hours, is uh, that takes courage. <laughs> it does. I'm not sure I have the patience for that. I'm not sure I could do it. I mean, really, I just don't know I could do it. It's a little bright, so I'm gonna add a little more pink. Just kind of popping some of those edges of the muscle where they kind of overlap, so. It makes it pop a little bit more. Also, too, with some of the highlights, I don't necessarily worry that they have to be straight lines. Like this one's a little blotchier because I kind of think of it as if it's wet and mm -hmm. kind of has a little bit of a highlight and it gives it a little more of an interesting texture going on besides all the lines on top of lines. Right. And so, like here, I just kind of put the highlights in the middle area because they kind of come from underneath and come over. So this would basically be the high point of that. Mm -hmm. And also making sure to bring the highlight into the tenon area and other places so it doesn't just look too one note. Oh, wow. So you did one in 2014 that was took eight to 10 hours? Yeah. Yeah, we've done a few <laughs> really big ones. Mm. What was that one? Uh, well, I did one where I painted them head to toe as Spider-Man, just the front. Mm -hmm. And uh, then over top of that, did kind of a black light reveal of Venom. So uh, it was just like the tongue wow. emblem. And so, that, yeah. <laughs> that took a long time. I bet. So 
yeah, he's always my guinea pig for the <laughs> green body pig. <laughs> oh, she was. He was talking about Silver Surfer. Oh, oh yeah, that that was a six-hour one or seven. I think that's a six or seven hour one. That was another head to toe. But luckily it's mostly white, but the white took forever just to get that nice and clean looking. Right. Because white is a bear. <laughs> it's sometimes it's really hard to get it to a nice, even consistency. I think it took like two and a half hours just to get the white base on him. Wow. I'm going to add some white into those tendon areas because they've kind of disappeared a little bit. There. Belinda says this is mesmerizing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm glad people are enjoying it and not thinking, okay, yeah, she keeps painting stripes. We get it. <laughs> So that's what it feels like sometimes. Just keep painting lines on top of lines, but it starts to look pretty cool. Gives it a cool dimension. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the white. It's really bright. I'm gonna keep them to the high point of the muscle mm -hmm. where the light would catch it. I'm going to go in there and just carve out those shadows a little bit more with the black out of the craze palette. It's amazing you can do this with normal face paint. Um, Galaxy wanted to know, uh, what consistency is your white paint when you sweep it over like that? How thin uh, it, should it be? Um, it is, I like to have it pretty dry mixture mm -hmm. so that um, it's a nice opacity. So yeah, I do, I do tend to do it pretty dry towards the end like this with the black and stuff I am definitely using a drier mixture so that it's pretty much the opacity and depth once it fully dries <laughs> Marina says, this is insanely amazing. Dedication and patience for detail is mind-blowing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if that's because I'm a Virgo. <laughs> I obsess over the Maybe that's it. Details. Maybe that's it. It's all the Virgo thing. Yeah. I'm just kind of putting some deep ones in just to make it look a little more interesting than just mm -hmm. like flat. I'm always just kind of looking and seeing what might look interesting to break up some of the larger areas. Mm -hmm.
And this is actually kind of like two muscles in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that line down, separate them a little bit. But yeah, so that's pretty much, you can see the overlapping and the right. shadows and highlights. And the nice thing is when you're doing it on the skin, you can kind of, you know, wherever the high point is on the skin, just kind of pop a highlight in because that's going to be the highest point. Uh -huh. Okay, so now, now that I did this if, part. If that was not, if that was, uh, that's just part of it. Yes, this is just part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it again with it. Zero marble sealer. So it's a light coat so that I don't disturb the muscle area. So right. I'm gonna turn on black light. And so this is what I used. It's an illustrator glow worm. So it's translucent, but it glows in black light. Would a normal neon face paint work as well? Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, the fun part about this that I like is, so it's alcohol activated. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing I like about it, take it and you can kind of just paint. I got a flashlight too, so you can see. Mm -hmm. But then if you take the black light away, it's completely gone. Wow, okay. So that's kind of the fun part about uh -huh. with the bones. So it's kind of neat that it just looks like a regular kind of muscle makeup and then you got that. So I think I'm actually gonna turn off. Turn down this one light. The trick though is because it is translucent, you do need to paint it under black light. So you wanna make sure there's not too much spill light going on. really can't see what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, you cannot paint with black light. That is absolute truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to find like a balance between having some spill light with the black light because it's just, you want to be able to see what, what you're doing. But that's kind of the trick with this stuff. Mm -hmm. but, so. so then, to start out, I just kind of start painting in the bones. Bring that and kind of see. I know it doesn't read, it might not read so well on the. Yeah. Let's see if I can make it a little darker so that you can see it better. I know a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the thing that kind of sucks is if you mess up with this, you can't really take it off unless, you know, if there was nothing underneath this. So right. Kind of carefully go about it. <laughs> so there's the only thing. So this part's definitely nerve wracking, but it's a really cool effect. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen other people do this. Have you guys ever done this or seen this? Using black light for bones? See, it kind of messed up a little bit because those bones don't touch, but it's kind of <laughs> like that, and it'd be fine. Nobody has to. And what's the name of the paint again? I'm just going to write it to, to write it down for these people. For people, it's a uh, Skin Illustrator Glow Worm. 
Oh, it's alcohol activated. So it's nice because it's uh, sweat and waterproof and stuff, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. But the real trick is just... But not good for kids. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't put that kids because it doesn't just come off with stuff and water. So I wouldn't recommend sending them home with this on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be a problem. Okay, so you can kind of see I painted the, the bones in there. So now yeah. I go and so I did it a little thin because admittedly I worried that I kind of put a wrong line. So now I'm just gonna take some more of that and just uh, build it up just a little bit so it glows a little better. I'll just go over what I just did and hopefully it will read better on camera because you know with the regular light it's kind of washing it out a little bit. Yeah most people have used uh, neons I think they understand. Yeah it's based it's the same rule except the only difference with this is you just don't see it uh, in regular lighting at all. Right. But yeah, it's kind of that, that same old <laughs> struggle with any kind of UV type thing. Yeah. But also too, uh, in the original makeup, I put a little more dimension to make them look a little more 3D using an airbrush and airbrushing this to kind of create some shadows because I just wanted soft shadows versus trying to paint them in by hand. Um, Now that that's a little more built up, then I'm going to take the black light away. No bones. But now I'm going to put a little dimension in there. Mm -hmm. So I actually have this cool little airbrush that's uh, cordless, which is super handy. And So I don't always like traveling with liquids to airbrush. So a trick I use, I do this with uh, water activated too. Mm -hmm. Just get your cake wet. So of course I'm using alcohol for this, but if it's regular face paint, just use the water. Use a big fat brush and then I just rake it into the cup of the airbrush. And then I don't have to worry about carrying liquids, mm. which is super handy. And then just kind of drag it into the cup. Like that. And it's great because it works with, you can do it with anything, it's kind of water based, whatever, mm -hmm. and it works great. So now, I'm just gonna go ahead and it's kind of the reverse, I guess. So you're actually painting the, I mean, you could paint the highlights with this because it is glowing, but I actually like to paint the shadows with a little little reverse, but I think it's kind of fun either way. And what machine are you using? Uh, this is actually one I got off of Amazon. It's a uh, Gocher and it came with the gun and came with the compressor. But you huh. can put your own gun on there, which is nice. But this is a go action. Yeah. Uh, G O C H E E R. Okay. And I have like a full compressor and a bunch of airbrush guns, but I kind of like the idea of having a cordless, especially. You know, if you don't have access to a power plug, 
if you're out on location or something. It's kind of cool. I'm just gonna let's see, just kind of build some little dimension in there. Mm -hmm. back over anywhere I want to build it up and kind of give it a little more punch but mm -hmm. it definitely gives it more of an interesting look versus just like the regular line without any airbrushing it's also kind of a nice way too to build up the outline a little bit because mm -hmm. with how the nature of <laughs> any neon or uv product so it's kind of the easy way to build it up because you're not reactivating what's there with the airbrush versus if you were applying it with a brush Hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I've got. And then if there's any places that use a little bit of cleaning up kind of back with that brush and just especially too with the airbrush you get some soft overspray so if you need to kind of go in and crisp up any areas that's just kind of save that for last if anything looks a little too soft mm -hmm. but this stuff is really fun i did a convention where I uh, just did my normal makeup and then I put this over top and painted a skull. So you could only see it if I use the black light flashlight. It's a really fun, fun little Halloween trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see with the, the flashlight. Right. Super bright. It doesn't necessarily read as bright with the, but it's just really fun because now I want to get my light back on. So let's see. You can see, you can't see the bone at all. Exactly. So it's, it's kind of a cool trick. So two in one. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, airbrushing. The black light stuff really helps to get some dimension, so it kind of goes right together. Right. But really it's interesting. Kind of, it's almost like an X-ray, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Two designs in one. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Cool. That is amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So I guess if anybody has any questions, because we're we're done. I think, or it looks, yeah. surely looks done. Yeah, that's a, kind of a fun, okay. fun, fun party trick. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, well, this has been great. I really, I think it's, um, you know, that's, uh, Belinda loves it. Uh, Jeff says it should be mentioned that the muscle bones UV makeup photos with a split face was not photoshopped. Jeff wanted to make that. Oh yeah, that that was uh, 
basically just angling a regular white light and kind of keeping one half in shadow, just like you would see with any kind of like moody photography. Right. And then having the black light on one side. Yeah. I really, I wanted to get that kind of practical effect of having both looks in one without kind of cheating and, you know, right. positing the two together. Cause it is a really cool effect. Uh, Beck says, looks great. Enjoyed watching it. Uh, uh, gallery galaxy asked, what do you study? And did you study anatomy? Uh, I actually did. Uh, cause in special effects school, we did have to do certain kind of academic courses. So there was an anatomy course. Okay. So we did the bones and we did run through the muscles, but I do still, I use a reference for it. I, I can't just like, I don't rely on just my mind's eye to do any kind of anatomy stuff. Right, right. Because I even okay. have like, I used, I cheated, I'm this little, little guy. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I totally recommend reference, <laughs> any kind of reference. I usually, I go through the internet and try to find as, as many different types because just different references, stuff looks a slightly different as far as like the overlapping and the dimensions. So I like to pull a few and mm -hmm. kind of compile them. This is amazing. Uh, Laura says, thank you for sharing. Excellent, fun, amazing. So uh, overall feedback was great. Right. So um, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for uh, participating in our contest and showing us your great art. And thanks, Jeff, for, uh, well, sitting there for eight hours. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, the sacrifices face painters, uh, significant others make, it's just, just extraordinary. Anyway, thank you very much, Chris. And uh, thank you all for joining us. And the uh, next webinar we got coming up is, I got a feeling it's Pam Kinneberg. Let's go, let's go, who's coming up next? Um, yep, we got Pam Kinneberg on December 10th uh, doing, uh, she's going to be doing some uh, winter designs at 6 p.m. Oh, Eastern. So um, you all have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank bye you bye. for coming out. <laughs>